reading it uh, this morning, we noticed in section B it talks about just abolishing that time frame from 8 p.m. until 8 a.m. Uh, our concern is, is that if we can just add something that says unless otherwise posted or restricted, because we do have metered areas that are restricted year round, for example, in between the library and the city county building, and then on State Street because of safety concerns that the police have brought up. And then uh, we have uh, 15 to 20 other locations throughout the city that the meter parking is signed stating that after hours it, it's a 15 minute time frame or a five minute time frame. Um, and by just uh, adding that, that will protect that. But if we don't, then it, can, it will cause further confusion and frustration for people. Erin. Thanks for paying attention to this. This is the kind of thing where I could see if you, if you weren't paying attention, we could pass something like this. Next year, we were wishing someone like you was paying attention and had help us, helped us give the insight that would make this better. It's a great suggestion. Thank you. Um, now might be also a good time to mention that the administration has forwarded to the council, and I think you just received it today. Is that correct? The um, updates to the overall parking ordinance that we are going to be discussing uh, once that gets placed on your agenda. And so some of these items might be strange uh, timing-wise, and this is something that we could incorporate into the overall parking ordinance changes at the same time. Uh, if you're amenable to that. And I think the other uh, issue that you're gonna be discussing next could also be a potential candidate to be rolled into the overall parking ordinance um, at that time, doing it all at once as opposed to piecemeal. Council members, are you comfortable with that, including it to the transmittal that we, re we received it today? Can I ask? Yes, Cindy. We, we've gone back and forth again to the point where we might become schizophrenic soon because when we put them all together, then it dies of its own weight because there's so many different components and it's so difficult to deal with. So in an attempt to scoot us forward a little bit, Allison has broken them down into chunks. So maybe we can do a combination where you vote separately on each of the um, components of it, but they're consolidated in one ordinance or something. Just just so you're aware, it that's why they're separate right now is because we failed with the grouping last round. <laughs> so what you're saying is that we could approve or deny these changes to be included in the new ordinance change? Yes, you could do that. And then, then since they have done a consolidated package, uh, when we bring those to you, we'll try to break them up by issue so that you can do straw polls on each one and go from there. It was just, when you're just talking about them all together, we, we failed at this a few times. We lose good substance. Yeah. Just by way of information, my understanding from previous versions of the transmittal that I saw is that there will actually be some additional uh, changes to the parking ordinance. Most of them are cleanups, but there will be a couple, I believe, that have policy implications, correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct, but I definitely respect and hear what Cindy's saying. I mean, there, you know, if, if it does tend to get diluted and some things get lost if you, if you include everything. So we're willing to work with you either way, whatever, whatever you wanna do. Well, that being said, we hate to make things look less important. So let's go ahead with these and, and then we'll include them with the ordinance that we received, the transmittal. So okay. let's drop all these, the issues on this already. I'm just asking Lisa to comment on whether that will work from their point of view for this particular Yeah, I might, item. I might want to refer to Jason for a timing issue. So yes, when it gets adopted, then we would have to revise the transmittal that we've sent to you, but we could include that. I'm just talking about including it in the transmittal. Okay. The changes that we're discussing today. So it would it, be a Okay, we, we can do that as Does well. Does that make that, sense? That is kind of what Cindy was referring to though, right? Yes. Right. Okay. We'll work with her. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> we will work it out. These are not these are not huge huge changes, and we, we'll definitely work it out. Okay. And Mr. Chair, just to clarify, so on the previous item, that is actually scheduled for action tonight. Would you like to postpone that? Well, I mean, we voted on it, so we might as well straw poll it as well. Do you want to? You straw polled it. 
We did, yes. and it was unanimous. Do you want to do it tonight, or do you want to wait until the rest of the items are brought to us? Any, any preference? The, no public hearing. No public hearing is required. I think might as well just include it with everything else. Okay. Great. Does that work? It does. Okay. Great. Thank you. You ready to move on to the next item? Yep. So the final of these three regards the streets for storage or 48 hour rule. The existing ordinance doesn't allow vehicles, including motorhomes, boats, trailers, to remain parked on city streets for longer than 48 hours. And the idea behind that, and, and uh, Isaac could certainly speak more to this, is to avoid the appropriation of public space by people who would like to live in their trailer, for example, on the street, um, for using them for, for different sorts of activities, including business activities, and then also to help detect abandoned and stolen property. So this is a rule that's been in place in the city in the past. And again, in the 2014 discussion, several council members mentioned the, the idea that it might be good to extend or eliminate this rule as part of an, of an effort to incentivize people or give them more encouragement to leave their car parked while they look at other forms of public transit. So the question is whether the council would like to consider those, uh, consider a longer period. There's a little bit additional information in the staff report regarding the fact that uh, the council office and parking, because um, Isaac has sent the data, does receive complaints from residents about cars being parked, vehicles being parked on the street, stored on the street. So they do receive several thousand per year of these kinds of complaints. On the flip side of that, or rather in addition to that, I guess they receive comments suggesting that the time period should actually be shortened rather than, than uh, left at 48 hours. The council office has received comments and complaints in the past from people who have left their cars or other vehicles and have returned from a trip, returned from a period of, of uh, incapacitation and found them towed. So we have received uh, comments on both sides of the issue and the question is how, how you would like to resolve it, if at all. Yes, Erin. The last piece that you mentioned was um, why I started, I think Luke Garrett and I started this conversation yep. a while ago. And there is that desire to encourage people to feel comfortable taking transit and leaving their vehicle, not having to manage moving a vehicle. But I think that the reasons that we have that ordinance in the first place are really valid good reasons um, that you listed. And I don't think that they are no longer applicable. But the idea that, uh, and I've heard, and maybe you guys have heard from constituents too, that I had a constituent whose wife had a baby, there was complications, they were at the hospital, and the last thing they needed was their minivan towed um, when they got home from the hospital five days later. Uh, th these things happen. People go on vacation, they, they don't have parking. I wish that there were a way that we could allow some kind of exemption, and um, I'm reminded of the mayor's um, the in lieu it, of payment in lieu of payment yeah the amnesty mm -hmm. and that it seems like there are occasions that people need that kind of amnesty where it could be um, concise enough that one wanting to live in their RV in a, on a chosen block in a neighborhood couldn't just continuously call in amnesty so that they could they can do that. Um, if anyone has input on how we, we make some kind of loophole on purpose for those occasions, I, that's, that's really what I was getting at. Uh, what, Mr. Mr. Chair, is there any way to, the city has right now to track certain things like that? If somebody were to call in and say on um, 7th West and 8th South, there's a blue minivan, I'll be leaving there for 48, for 72 hours because of this and this and this. Is there any way to track that at this point? Yes, there Easily. is. Um, so these type of incidents are complaint based. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't go down the street and put a notice on cars. So usually a, a resident calls, says, hey, this vehicle's been here for 48, 72 
up to five days. Mm -hmm. And then we go out and that's when we actually lay a 48 hour notice. And that, that's us giving them an, an additional 48 hours to do something with the vehicle. And then if it's not dealt with by that point, that's when it's moved from the block. Um, so in actuality, you know, most of these vehicles have already been there longer than 48 hours when we mm. come upon them. Uh, there, there are several incidences where, you know, we have repeat offenders, um, uh, motorhomes that'll, you know, are broke down on the street, we'll have it removed, uh, either by us, police, or the health department. And, you know, a month later, it's back out on the street again. So same, if we, if we left, the same thing again. So. I'm just thinking if we left this expectation in place for 48 hours, is there a way for somebody to proactively say, I need to have an exemption from this for some amount of time. The city could trace that so that if there was a complaint, it'd be flagged in the system and say, well, we do have an exemption for that vehicle for this time, whatever it is. Well, our dispatch does track that. Um, we log all the 48 hour notices mm -hmm. and then on a regular basis, we have people call and say, hey, look, we're working on it, but it's gonna be until Thursday that I can get the vehicle moved because it's broke down. We record that in the, in the complaint mm -hmm. uh, database and give them that extension. But it, it, it's based on them being proactive in what their situation is. That's what I'm thinking. Is there a way to, for a citizen to be proactive and say, I forecast this is going to error in the middle of it. We so, have an expectation, but you have an, ex an exception. Yeah, council member, I appreciate the discussion because I think it is important to distinguish between whether or not there is a desire to change the ordinance, the rule about 48 hour streets for storage and whether or not we want to explore uh, some kind of program that would help people be proactive in that way. And so, uh, you know, I think the ordinance changed before you is, is asking whether or not you want to change the ordinance. Um, and I would say that our data that we have collected and, and the practices that we're, we have in place are, uh, you know, they seem to be commiserate with the amount of complaints that we get. So, okay. I like the concept of, of keeping the expectation of the ordinance in place, but finding ways to help f folks have exemptions, essentially, legal ones. Yeah, I'm in favor of that as well. I think that, you know, 48 hours, you, you notify them, give them another 48, that's 96 hours. So if you're comfortable with keeping the ordinance as is with some sort of looking at a program for amnesty or or you know some sort of give back on the on the issue for those that are uh, hard up or or have extenuating circumstances. Mr. Chair. Yes. So I'm thinking about you know when I go out of town and we have you can call the news if you take the newspaper you can you know have it paused for a week or two weeks or however long you need. Is there a way for us to do that with this uh, on street parking as well? So if somebody's going to have a baby, they can call in and say, I'm going to leave my car parked for five days. Is there a way for us to maybe work around that in some way and allow people some sort of freedom to to park their car on their street while they're out of town or out of commission for some reason? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we would definitely be amenable to looking at some kind of program that um, accommodates life circumstances for people. Can We'd I be get willing to look more at that. specific on that? Does our current technology that enforcement officers use have the capacity to attach notices to license plate numbers so that someone could call proactively as opposed to responding to a ticket to say this license plate number yeah. here's here's my name and my address I'm going out of town for two weeks I, I think that Do the that technology capacity? definitely can accommodate that um, in the current configuration I believe we would have to Isaac you can chime in here but I think we would have to make some modifications for this specific exemption uh, but the technology exists where we can enter um, into a database uh, vehicles that are exempt for whatever reason I mean doesn't it seem fair if you and Kyle go out of town for a week and you want to leave a car parked in front of your house that you ought to be able to call in and say please don't ticket me because my neighbors report right okay. well and also <laughs> take into account other things like registration and existing laws so that you could have ways to make sure that it's not just somebody calling in for an exemption for something that's broken down and sitting there for weeks. Um, we wouldn't have a way to validate that, actually. We'd, perhaps we could put some kind of limit on the amount of times you can access the amnesty in a calendar year or per vehicle or something. Yeah, and I mean, this, this is part of the exploration process with this kind of a program. I think that we would discover some of the things that you're talking about. Um, you know, we, we still would 
be allowed to ticket, for example, if your registration is out of date or, you know, we would have to explore all of those options and possibilities to make sure that we're not violating our own ordinance uh, while accommodating this, this program. So I, I'd just like to request that in the exploration process that there be, um, I know we're getting into paint colors a little, but that there be a database so that we can track a vehicle's use of the process and um, over whatever course of time we are going to designate as how often one can. And that we also um, attempt, to, at least in the draft, to define the maximum amount of time one can um, request exemption for, and, and you would know. Well, keeping the same parking ordinance of 48 hours. Yes. Okay. That's a straw poll, right, Aaron? That was a straw Okay, everyone that's in favor of that. Let's clarify again, so. So just keep it in place right now. Are there addendums now that she mentioned that we want to put in or just? With the intent of looking into the, intent. the, okay. with the program. Yeah. Correct. So thumbs up if you're in favor of that. Mr. Chair. Yes. Quick question. Are you talking about a legislative intent or are you asking uh, staff to draft an ordinance and work with, with uh, for, public for the services, program. obviously? I think what we were going to work together. Isn't that what you yes. were just talking about? To it's draft just, an ordinance. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's great. Okay. Is that it on your time ordinance? Yes. Number six? That's it on parking for tonight. Okay, well we have a 15 minute break and then we're gonna take it. We'll come back in 15 minutes at 410 to discuss number seven, the procurement appeals process amendments.